Okay, everyone, I am back. And so here we're going to get to painting Mr. SpongeBob. What colors do I have? Here's my paint palette. palette forget, forgive me for it being so messy, but I was using it earlier. And um, I've got a bunch of fresh paint or wet paint on it still. I don't feel like wasting my paint and creating a new plate. So anyhow, what colors do I got? I have yellow, I've got red, I've got blue, I've got white, I've got green, I've got a little bit of black and a little bit of brown, okay? So those are the colors that we're gonna be mixing. So this is our paint palette. And then I do have another plate where I'm gonna be mixing some colors. So um, so keep that in mind. I also have paper towels. Always a good idea to keep paper towels on hand. Accidents can and will happen. That's just how this works. Um, I also have a cup with some brushes in them. I know that you guys at home might be coloring this with maybe crayons or uh, watercolors or tempera paint, etc. I'm using acrylic paint and these are the brushes that I'm going to be using. Whatever you've got at home, you can make them work. But if I was going to recommend something, you need to have some skinny small brushes for the little small areas for the detail, right? Depending on how small your drawing is, um, it's very important. You need a couple of larger brushes. This is about an inch thick brush, an inch wide. <clears throat> So I can cover, cover larger areas um, of the canvas for the for the large parts. And then you also need something, um, a really skinny one, a really pointy skinny one, um, so that you can come in and, um, you know, do some of the outlining, color in some small sections. And then you want something that's kind of in between. This is about a half inch brush. It's called a flat brush. All the ones that I'm working with, other than the little pointy one, are considered flat brushes. All right. So... Nothing fancy. You can get yourself some pretty cheap uh, and good brushes at any art store. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Anywhere between, I don't know, seven, eight, ten bucks is all you'll ever really need for this kind of stuff. And as long as you take care of the brushes, uh, you clean them up after you're done, and then you set them out to dry, straighten out the bristles, usually that's enough to make them last a really long time. So anyway, enough of that. Let's get into the painting part. So um, got my mixed plate. I'm going to mix this background color. Uh, I kind of want to kind of create a watercolor. And to do that, I take a little bit of the green from my paint palette. So I'm doing this, grabbing some green from here. Okay, when I say when I say my paint palette, I'm referring to this. Okay, so I'm, or my paint plate. If I use either one of those, it means I'm grabbing paint from that plate with paint on it and I'm bringing it over. And then when I say my mix plate, I'm talking about bringing it over into my mix plate. All right, so I bring a little green over and I grab some blue. I grab a little bit more blue than I did green. All right, just a little bit more. I mix the two together and then I get this kind of dark uh, green-blue combination. This is what you can call aqua. <clears throat> I'll grab some white and then I'll bring that over and I'll mix that as well. This is going to create kind of a, a light blue-green color. And you can make yours as light as you'd like or as dark as you'd like. The next thing that I'm going to do once I've mixed this up is I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to dip it into my water cup, right, where I have all, all of my brushes sitting. I'm going to grab some water, bring that over, and drip it into the mix that I just created. I mean, you can't see it on camera, but <clears throat> I simply grabbed some of that water with the brush. I came over and I dripped it onto this. <clears throat> now what I'm doing is I'm going through and mixing this really, really well. I may need to do that a couple of times where I grab water, dip my br brush into the cup, come over, let that drip into my, my paint mixture, and then I do this. Now I don't cover up my entire plate with this because I'm going to be using the plate to maybe mix other colors. So I want to keep my paint mixes to a small section of my plate. That way I don't have to go through a bunch of different plates, right? All right, once I got my mixture... I'm going to come over. I can use this size brush or a slightly larger brush. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over to the larger brush. Uh, the brush that I'm actually let me start with this one. Since I got paint on it now, I'm just gonna do this. Okay, I'm just gonna come over and go like that. I work kind of quickly, and if it looks kind of streaky like it does over on the original, that's perfectly fine. No big deal there. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm gonna stick to this brush. I'm good with it. Around the edges of SpongeBob, I just kind of do this. I don't, I'm trying to avoid getting paint on the inside of his body. So I use the skinny side of the brush, the narrow side, 
I come around, I, I do this just like that, all the way down, all the way over. Okay. Um, same thing over here, just like that. Go over, down, just like that. This, like this, like this. Bam. Okay. And then I continue, continue doing this. I just want to fill in all the spaces in between SpongeBob and the outer edges of. Uh, the canvas so the entire canvas is going to have color on it all right so i keep doing that so watch what i do around his hands and things like that where there's really small little areas i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do anything with those with this brush i just come close and then i avoid these little these small sections why do i avoid them as much as i can because i don't want to get any paint on the inside of spongebob's body if I accidentally get some paint in there, I can I can clean it up. I can wipe it off. I can use a paper towel to clean it up. But I want to avoid having to hassle with that, right? So again, right now, I'm just... Oh, and then below this line is the ground. So we're not going to do that in blue. That's the, the sea bottom, the floor of the ocean, right? Because SpongeBob lives out in the ocean. Bob Esponja. Again, for those of you that don't know, Bob Esponja, and I think, pretty sure that's what he's called in Spanish, Bob Esponja. The cartoon is called Bob Esponja. Again, if any of you out there know better than that, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Oh, Jesse, that's not what he's called. He's called this. I know I can Google it, <laughs> but right now I'm not, I'm not going to Google that. You guys can tell me if you guys want. How's that? So there we go, folks, just like that, all the way around. Okay, just like that. <clears throat> also, the next thing I'll do, I want to do the edges of my canvas. So I'm not going to go down below this line here either. So here, right, so this comes across, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go up. I'm going to do this all the way around the edges. So because I'm working on a, with a canvas, right, you don't have to do a canvas. If you guys are painting on construction paper or... I don't know, whatever you guys have that you're painting on, then you don't have to, if it's a flat surface, completely flat, you don't have to worry about this. Right? This is most, this is for those of you that are using canvases like me. And uh, I like to use eight by 10 canvases for now, at least for a while, eight by 10 inch canvases. This is the size that I'm gonna be using, boys and girls. So if your parents ask, or parents, if you're listening and you guys wanna <clears throat> get them these, these are eight by 10s, you can get these I pick these up at places like, um, <coughs> excuse me, at places like, uh, um, well, lost my train of thought. Hobby Lobby has these. Uh, you can also pick them up on um, at Michael's. I don't know if you guys have any of these stores near you. I'm in California. I think these guys, I think they're both nationwide. So, but you can pick them up other places. Walmart may even have them. Okay. So, so this is, so I'm. Again, I just fill in the inside of all, all of this, and I kind of, in this case, you guys all, I'm sure you noticed, I'm using sideways strokes or horizontal strokes, right, side to side. You guys, if you wanted to, you guys can use up and down. That's fine, too. And I'm not necessarily look, looking to make the background super smooth um, by making it a little bit uneven where I got streakiness going in the paint. It makes it look like, um, like we got... Um, a little bit of water, like kind of water um, flowing around Mr. SpongeBob. There we go, boys and girls. Look at that. Now, I'm going to take my brush. I put it back in my cup because I don't want it to dry out on me. I'm going to switch over to uh, this little guy. This is a little flat brush. Kind of hard to see. A little flat brush. This guy's really small. This is what's called a number two shader brush. Okay. It has a little, no, I, I called it a flat brush, but it's technically a shader brush, but it has a flat top. The top of it is it's a it's flat and it's really skinny. Okay, I'm going to use this guy. Anything you guys have like this, all right? Doesn't have to be this exact thing. And I'm going to come in, fill all the little areas around SpongeBob's body and his clothes, like his hands and things like that. And I'm just going to fill this in. I use the small one because it gives me better control and it makes it easier for me to keep from uh, painting on the inside of Mr. Bob Esponja's body, all right? 
So here we go. Go here, pull it around. This, don't forget boys and girls at any point. If you guys want to um, pause, back it up, the video, if you guys miss something, please feel free to do so. And then, of course, you guys can do this as many times as you guys want. If you guys want to practice on Mr. SpongeBob and you want to practice by um, repeating this whole process, please feel free to do so. Absolutely. That's what it's here for. Why don't you guys have fun with it? But I do want to hear from you guys. Please leave me your comments below. Let me know where you're watching from. Oh, that's that's an awesome one. I want to know where you guys are seeing these videos from. And then if you want to share some of your paintings with me, <clears throat> you can send them directly to kidszoneartapalooza at gmail.com. Um, look, look for the link in the description for the video, underneath the video. And then guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And it really helps me if you guys subscribe, and it really, really helps me even more if you guys uh, hit the little alert icon so that anytime I upload a new video, you guys are notified, okay? All right, look at that. Cool. Um, now let's do, the, let's do the floor. Might as well do the floor since we're working on that background, okay? So I'm going to be using the same brush that I used originally on that background. I swish it around the water a little bit because I want to remove some of that extra paint. I want to try to get it as clean as I can. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean. So I just slosh this around in the cup. And I come over and I do this, squeeze the extra out of my paper towel. And I'll do this a little bit. I can see there's still some on there. But I'm not too worried about that in this particular part of the painting process. It's not very crucial or not super important. All right. Back to my paint plate. Right. And what did I say my paint plate is? Or my paint palette. That's the plate. That I got all my paint on. So I grab a little bit of brown. We're mixing the color for the bottom, for the seafloor. Just a little bit of brown. I can grab a little tiny bit of yellow, just a tiny bit of yellow. Bring it over. I'm going to grab a little tiny bit of white, actually a little more white than anything else. And I'm going to mix the three together. Oh, you can make yours as dark or as light as you'd like, as yellow as you'd like. Once you've got the color that you want, you go ahead and add it to your painting. I'm using the same brush. Like I said, we don't have to water, add water in this case um, because the paint mixture in this part is already pretty smooth, but might as well. It will help. It will help a little bit. So I just dip my brush into that paint, into that water, sorry, and then I'm going to come over. I got my mix how I want it. And here I go around the, I'm going to do the top edge where the, where the water and the bottom meet first. Just kind of I'm using the skinny part of the brush. I'm doing that. All right. And now I can use the fat part of the brush, like this, the thick part, and do this. So if you guys notice, the two colors aren't exactly the same. Neither, neither the background color for the blue or the background color for um, the ground. I don't, I don't mind that. That's... My point isn't to try to match up the colors exactly, and yours shouldn't either. You can if you want, right? Maybe you like that color a lot, and you like that color a lot, and you want to try to match it as much as you can. You can. It just takes a little while. You just got to keep playing with the colors till you get it. But for this tutorial, I'm not really concerned with that, okay? And then I come over and do the edge. I'm not going to do the bottom of this until the very, very end, okay? I don't want to do that because if I do it now, when I put this back on my easel, it's going to stick. If you're painting on a canvas and not, and not using an easel, maybe you're using a table, right? It's flat like this. Then go ahead and do the bottom. All right. There we go. Look at that. <clears throat> How cool is that? We are moving along. We are moving along here. All right. Next step. Let's go ahead and work on the inside. Let's do his eyeballs. Let's work on his eyeballs. We're going to do the blue of his eyeballs first. All right. So... Back to one of my small brushes. I'm not gonna use a little skinny, skinny liner brush that I showed you guys earlier. I'm gonna use this little guy right here. And I could probably use a slightly bigger brush than this, but this is good enough for now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna simply come over to my plate, paint plate. I'm gonna grab the blue directly. I don't have to mix it with anything. The only reason I would mix it is, is if I wanted him to have lighter color eyes. I maybe would mix it with some white to make a light blue. Maybe some of you guys want SpongeBob to have light, light blue eyes. 
and that's fine too. Or maybe you want him to have different colors, colored eyes, that's fine too. Uh, and that's another thing, guys. Whenever you're painting with me, if you want to change your painting around, maybe your colors, etc., that is really up to you. Um, it's your painting, and I want you guys to have fun with it. <clears throat> so if you wish to change something up, it is entirely up to you. Okay, there's his eyeballs, his blue eyeballs. Now I'm going to take the same brush. I'm going to dip it right into the black. Just a, I don't, just a little tiny bit of black. We're going to do the center of his eyes. Those are called pupils, right? So there we go. Let's do the pupil part of his eyes. There we go. And you guys all noticed that he's got these two little light dots on the inside of his eyes, right where the pupils are. We're not going to do those till the very end. Okay, those are little light reflections that make his, his eyes stand out. And whenever anybody's looking at light, we're walking around. If so if you look into somebody's eyes, you're going to see all kinds of light reflections in there. That's what those little guys are. But we're not going to mess with those right now. Take my little brush, put it back into the cup. We're done with it for now. Now I'm going to take. I'm going to go back to this brush that we've been working with. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but this is about a half inch brush, about a half inch brush. I'm going to clean it up a little bit because I'm going to, I'm going to work with some white. So I want to swirl it around my cup really, really well. I'm only doing this because I'm working with acrylic paint. And maybe some of you guys aren't working with paint. Um, maybe you're working with crayons or markers or whatever. But I am going to take some white, even though our canvas is white. I'm going to take some white and I'm going to apply it. You can tell the difference between a white blank canvas and the white paint that's applied on the canvas. Typically the paint is a little glossy and it and the canvas is a kind of a dull, opaque color. So here I came in a little too close, a little too further into the eyeball um, with my white paint. So I'm just using my finger to come in and clean that up a little bit. Later on, if I get some other, like I got a little bit of blue mixed in there, you probably can't tell on the camera, but I got a little tiny bit of blue in there. I'll come in and add some more white later on. But for now, this is all I'm going to do. I'm just going to layer one. Do one layer of white in here, and whoop, I did it again. See, I'm using a brush that's a little too big for this. I would probably be, be better off using a brush that's in between that really small brush that I just used a moment ago in this one. And that's another thing you, you know, brush choice when you're painting can make your job a lot easier. But you, know, you can also just be really careful and, you know, avoid all that. So there we go. Oh, look at that. Okay, cool. I'll come in and adjust his eyes in, in a little while, add him a little bit more blue, make them stand out a little bit more, maybe make some corrections around the, um, the eyeball. I also noticed that I painted over the outline. That's okay too, I can always fix that later, okay? Um, while we're working with white, let's work on his shirt and let's work on those teeth. So I'm switching brushes. Back to the little one that I was using a moment ago, the one that I used for the blue around his eyes. I'm going to clean it up. Okay, this is a good size for working on the teeth. Now I'm going to come in, straight white off the paint plate, and I'm just going to do the inside. There's that. All right. While I'm doing this, let's go over to the sleeves. There we go. And then we might as well also do that shirt. Looks like I got a little bit of blue mixed into my white paint from my mixed palette, uh, my paint plate. That's all right. We're going to be layering a little bit, meaning that one layer of paint doesn't always do the job. We can come back and add another layer. Right. There we go. So I'll forget his uh, collar. All right. Is that all the white spots for now? That is. Cool. Take my brush. 
Watch, if I have a little bit of extra paint somewhere where I don't want it, I can use the back part of my brush to clean it up. I just do that. And it'll all take off. There we go. All right. Okay. Okay, so let's work on the inside of Mr. SpongeBob's yellow color. So I'm switching over to my little half inch brush or quarter inch brush even if you guys have one of those something around that size i just need something that can go around the inside now i'm going to not worry too much when i when i use the yellow i'm going to come in and just kind of i can cover up things like the eyelashes because yellow's transparent and all that stuff is still going to i'm still going to be able to see it okay and all i need is to be able to see it so I can come back later and maybe outline it in that particular color. So, for example, the nose, right? I can still see the nose coming through there. I can still, I can still see um, his little, these little guys that look like birthmarks, but they're, they're again, Sp SpongeBob is a sponge, right? He's a, sea, he's a sea sponge. And sea sponge is like the sponges in your house, the sponges you guys use in your home. They have holes. Um, and so that's what those guys are, but all right, so here we go. Look at that. Take your time, folks. Avoid the, um, getting paint into where the, into the water areas. If you do, simply use your finger to clean it up or you can grab a little paper towel. Just be careful and clean it up. Okay. Now, the yellow that I'm using in this case is a little bit more yellow than the original. There's a little more orange in that particular yellow that I used. That's all right. I kind of like this a little bit better anyway, but it doesn't matter. Whatever yellow you guys have, will. and here's what I'm noticing. So the ink, when I, use, when I went over my pencil marks with the ink pen, that red ink pen, it's bleeding a little bit into the paint. Not to worry about that, but just something that I don't know if you, it's coming through on the camera, but that's what that is. All right. And all right. Very cool, and I'm happy with what we got so far. Next thing I'm going to do is work on his little brown pants. Switching back to a brush. That's, again, that little small brush. Mix a little bit of brown. And maybe that mixture that we use for the floor. It's still a little bit wet, so I can mix some brown into it. And I can use that. If you don't have that mixture still, just mix some brown, some white, and maybe a touch of yellow. Mainly his, his brown, his pants or his shorts are brown. So here I come. There we go. Don't forget kids, parents, I, uh, I take requests. So if you guys have a favorite cartoon character, if you guys want to see me do a tutorial on uh, something that you guys really like, maybe you guys like kitties or elephants or um, snakes even. Let me know in the comments section. Let me know what you guys want to see, and I'll be more than happy to do a tutorial on that. As long as it's not something that's really, really, like, maybe not popular, right? Maybe people don't really like to see something like that. I want to make sure it's something that other people would enjoy. You know, you know some things that are popular, um, like teddy bears. Um, like uh, Tinkerbell's also a good one, right? There we go. That doesn't mean you can't have different tastes. You totally can. I'm just saying that for the purpose of my channel, I'd like to do stuff that's popular with people. But anyway, just let me know what you'd like, what you'd like to see, and maybe you'll see me do a tutorial on that. I'll even say your name on camera. I'll say your name on the video. That this, you know, I'm doing this for so and so. All right, there's those pants. And don't forget, we're doing this. We're doing this painting for Damien. We're doing this one for Damien, my nephew Damien. For those of you that followed me on the. Um, on the drawing part of the video, the first part of this whole thing, where we do SpongeBob, I'm doing this for my nephew, Damien. Um, his birthday's coming up in August next month, and um, he's going to be nine years old. He's a little artist himself. Likes to follow uh, Bob Ross, the painter, um, and does some stuff. Uh, for, I, don't, I don't know if he does other, he follows other people, but hopefully he starts following me too. <laughs> Damien, if you're watching and, and listening, I just want to say hi and um, 
tell your mama I said hello. His mom, Crystal, is my, my cousin. Okay, so there's his pants. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab some black. We're going to work some black now. We're going to do the shoes. Remember earlier when we did when we drew this and I showed you how to do this, I told you that that line, that the line in between is going to get not erased, but you weren't going to see it anymore. Look at that. A little shoe. Look at that. Now Mr. Spongebob has some shoes. Look at that. And now let's go over and do his belt buckles. I mean his uh, belt. Not his belt buckle. Or black belt. Okay. And except for doing maybe some of the outlining and stuff later on, uh, we don't need any more black at the moment. So I'm going to... Oh! Look at that. Good catch. My paint palette caught it. One thing I highly recommend if you're painting at home, wherever you're painting, uh, especially if you're using acrylic paint, you want to protect your floor. Um, on my floor, uh, even my table, I have a, I have a, uh, I covered it with some some paper, um, just to keep it. Acrylic paint can get really messy, and on cloth, it's really difficult to clean off of if it gets if it gets in there. So, um, so just to, just something to keep in mind, unless you don't mind the area that you're you know, working on getting dirty. Maybe it's a studio that's dedicated to to doing art and stuff, and it's no big deal. But anyway, I like to protect the floors. Uh, I'm going to grab a little bit of red off my mix plate, I'm my paint plate, sorry, just straight red, and I'm going to come in with my little tiny brush, and now I'm going to do that tie. Look at that. Woo! He's looking nice. Mr. SpongeBob is looking really cool with his little, with his little um, tie. Look at that. All right. Oh, uh, when we were working on his body with the yellow, what did I forget? I know some of you guys at home noticed this. I've got his arms and his uh, legs. So I'm going to use my little liner brush, little tiny skinny brush. It's called the liner brush. Okay, I'm going to do this. Uh, the smaller and skinnier the brush, the better control I have. Here I go. I don't know if any of you are noticing, I'm using my finger to stabilize my hand. I find a spot on the canvas that's dry and I just kind of put my finger there. Yeah, something that takes practice. I've been drawing since I was really small. And uh, this is something that I use when I'm, when I'm, when I'm drawing as well. I'll, I'll use my hand, I'll find a spot on what I, whatever I'm painting on and I just kind of Lay my hand on there. It stabilizes my hand and it keeps me from having to do it like this freehand. I can it, this can be done as well, especially with a lot of practice. But this just makes it a little easier to to do. So there's his uh, there's his arms and his little legs are coming up. And here's the other thing: my hand that I'm not painting with, I'll put it on the table and I'll rest my hand that I'm painting with over it. And that again, that stabilizes my my paint hand now i know spongebob has socks we're gonna add the socks in a little bit okay we're gonna wait for that to dry a little bit and we're gonna add some socks at least i think we are i don't know that it's necessary okay so what's next let's do his little um i'm gonna call them birthmarks i know they're again he's a sponge so he has little spots his sponge spots how's that so i'm going to take some brown um, brown, a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow. It's kind of close to the color of the floor. I'm going to mix those three together. Maybe take a little tiny, 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 tiny bit of red. A little tiny bit and then maybe a touch of green. These are just very small, small, small little um, bits of paint that I'm using. Or little, little tiny amounts of paint, I should say. All right, here we go. I'm going to use my finger again. I'm going to find a spot on the canvas that's not wet. And here we go. Actually, I'm going to make that a little more green. I think that came out a little too dark. A little more green, a little yellow. I want those spots to be a little, <clears throat> a little more greenish, like on the original. Find a little spot, put my finger on there. So 
remember, folks, that you can um, <coughs> you can make adjustments as you go. That's all part of the creative process. Kids, practice does help you improve. So if any of you are having a hard time with this at all, don't stress out. I don't know if you're out for summer, but you got plenty of time over summer uh, to do some more painting. And absolutely, the more you do it, the better you'll get. Promise you that. Okay. Um, there's that, those little birthmark spots. What I want to do next is I'm going to come in and add more white to the inside of my eyeball. And then I'm going to, actually, I'm not going to do, I'm going to do the white. We won't do any outlining until the very end. All right. The reason why I have an outline in mind, for those of you that did followed me on the drawing part, is that I had to. Normally, I would only have pencils right now, pencil lines right now, but because I want you guys at home to, to be able to see the whole process, I did outline it with a marker and colored pencils in some cases. So, take my little brush, put it back in. This time, I'm switching over to the really small um, shader brush that I showed you guys earlier. Number two, this little guy. Again, not super important, just, you just need something small. I cleaned up pretty well. Come over, and now I'm going to take um, just add a little white paint in there. making the whites white part of my eyes a little bit um <clears throat> stand out a little bit more a little whiter taking off the excess with my finger excess and I'm just putting it on my palm probably don't use your palm use a pen <laughs> use a paper towel don't want your parents getting upset at me okay. I'll select that all right, I'm going to take some white and also go over his little pants again. Whoops, little eye. All right. Cool. <clears throat> There's Mr. SpongeBob. <clears throat> I have a few little things left. Uh, I am going to take um, an outline. <clears throat> this is a step that you guys would want to do at home um, to make SpongeBob stand out a little bit more. I'm going to take my little tiny liner brush, a little tiny skinny brush that I've been working with. I'm going to start with brown from my mix plate. I bring some brown over. Add some drops of water for my for my cup. I do that a couple times. Watch this little technique. When I dip the brush into the paint, when I'm ready to start putting it on the canvas, I spin it and pull away, and that makes the point really skinny. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to come around and do this. When you do the outline, now SpongeBob, Mr. SpongeBob, is going to stand out. I'll do that all the way around. All the way down. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else in brown that maybe we can outline? Yep. There's little shorts. Pants. Whatever they are. We need some clarification on that. Are they pants or are they shorts? I could have done this in black too, and that would have worked. There we go. Now I'm going to take some black. Do the same thing. 
mix it up really well with water. Just grab a few droplets, bring it over to the plate, mix it in with the, with the black. For this, what I'm going to do is uh, do the outlines on his eyes. So do this to yours. <clears throat> You guys are doing in crayon or you're using a pen <clears throat> markers now I'm gonna go ahead and do his eyelashes can't forget that <coughs> and then let's do his lips his mouth Do the edges of his mouth, stay where his lips are. Do his little, looks like little stubble or whiskers, like the beginnings of whiskers. These guys right there. One, two, three. Let's take the other side. We got four. All right. And then we're going to outline his teeth. Oops. Build up on some more paint. Here we go. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to do uh, the inside of his pupils one more time, just a little bit, a little darker. And you know what? The original doesn't have this, but I'm going to go ahead and outline the blue of his eyes also. Stand out even more. Look at that. That does make a difference. Cool. So then, top of his shirt. So what this is doing is it's just uh, making everything stand out, stand out a little bit more, boys and girls. All right, right here. Sleeves. Sides of the shirt. Let's do his little, little legs. And I'm going to do his arms in brown. So back to the brown a little bit, clean up the brush a little. We got some brown in here. Mix with water still. Skin the brush as I pour it away. Make it really skinny. Give him a hand here. My arm for stability. Cool as that. And then one last thing I do want to do is I want to outline his nose. I'm also going to come in with some more yellow here in a second. And his little cheeks. And his little chin. Okay. I'm going to switch my brush. That little small. Oops, wrong one. This one right here. Same one, same one we've been using. Real popular today. Let's make his nose stand out a little bit more. All right. Cool. Look at that. All right, Mr. SpongeBob is looking fantastic. He wants to hug too. Now we got two SpongeBobs and they both want to hug. Last thing I'll do, actually, no, one more thing before I do that. I'm going to sign it and take my little liner brush. Anytime you paint, and you do something kind of cool and you want people to know who did that painting, it's always a nice idea to, to uh, 
to um, sign it. Now you guys at home can sign with whatever you've got. I'm going to use my little liner brush. I'm going to come over with blue and I'm going to go Jesse. This. Ta-da! Cool. And then last thing I told you guys we were going to do the very bottom, the very end. So that's what we're going to do. Um, my mixture was brown and white and a little tiny bit of yellow. I think it was what it was. doesn't matter too much. It's going to be on the bottom. It's kind of a little hard to see, but I'm going to do that. Then we come across and we're going to do this just like. How about that? Cool. Look at that, everyone. Look at that. Now, normally I would have flipped it back around and do this because if it, as it dries, it will stick to the easel, but just so you guys can see side by side. Look at what that looks like. How cool is that? <clears throat> I don't know. We could if we want. We could add some glitter. I'm going to think about it for a moment, and uh, we'll see. We'll see you in just a bit. I'll let you know. Keep you guys all in suspense. Okay, boys and girls. So I decided <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and go with the glitter, but I did forget one thing, and I'm sure some of you guys caught this. I didn't do the little, the little light reflections in Mr. SpongeBob's eyes. So let's get, get to that now. All right. So he's got one on top of each eye and one on the bottom. One on top and one on the bottom. So like this, just I'm taking my little liner brush. And look at that. Look what a difference that makes. That looks like he's gives him a little bit of life. And one little tiny one on the bottom. So he's got one on top and one on the bottom. Now let me go ahead and grab my uh, glitter stuff here so we can get that ready. But for, for those of you, you know, take a look at yours. Make sure they, they, you know, they match up. I'll probably touch up his little nose here in a little bit once that dries after I add a little bit of glitter. Come back in with a little bit more yellow and um, clean that up. So hold on. But again, keep looking at the painting. See if you forgot anything. Maybe you know you forgot to. Uh, maybe you guys forgot to do his eyelashes like I did originally, and all this other stuff. Anyway, all right. I was just buying some time, so I'm back, and I got some glitter colors over here. I got some uh, some blue. I got some this some this cool kind of teal stuff too. I got some. Gold, not sure that we're going to be using all these, but maybe. And I got some of this cool stuff, it looks kind of like bubbles. Maybe we're going to use it out behind his body, like where these are. Yeah, that's what we're going to do with that guy. So, again, with the glitter stuff, this is paint glitter or, or glitter glue is probably a better, um, a better term for it. Nothing fancy about this, you're going to be applying it to the painting just like you do, um, like you did the paint. Um, so I put some of this stuff right here, this cool stuff uh, called glitter glue, and it's super chunky. Uh, on my plate, this is stuff. This stuff is really thick. I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So I put it on my plate. It helps if I add a little bit of water to it. So I'm going to grab in this particular case because it's so thick. I'm going to do this. Now the original doesn't have any glitter. I'm sure you guys already noticed, but here's what I'm going to do. This is going to go in the water back here. There's water behind, behind Mr. SpongeBob. And that's what this is going to look like. Little water bubbles. For those of you at home, maybe you guys want to paint the water bubbles in. You could. I did a, uh, I did a, I did an octopus a while back. Not too, not too long ago. And we'll be doing a mermaid sometime soon where I paint in water bubbles. All right. Look at those. Look how cool that looks. Got these little water bubble. Uh, we got these little bubbles now in the background. These look like bubbles floating around, Mr. S Mr. SpongeBob. How cool is that? Just thought of this right now. How cool! How cool! How cool! All right. So there's that. And again, these are just a bunch of bits of glitter. And I can, if I wanted to, I could come and do it on the sides too. But I'm not gonna mess with that right now. Okay, take my brush, put it back in the cup. Now this one's probably going to be a little harder <clears throat> to see, but I'm going to add, even though his eyes aren't teal, his eyes are blue, 
I kind of like this um, this teal glitter right here, this teal stuff. It's also glitter glue. So I grab a little bit, put it onto my, no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to mix this with some, some of the fine glue glitter. I put that on my plate. I'm going to grab some, uh, call this glamour dust. Little tiny fine uh, little bits of glitter in there so I'm gonna shake that off a little bit sometimes the glitter gets to the bottom add a little bit right there now I'm gonna take my little liner brush yeah I can take my little liner brush for this I'll make sure it's clean right I clean it up pretty well I'll mix the two together I'll do this and now I'm gonna come in where do you guys think this is gonna go you guessed it around Mr. Spongebob's eyes. Give him a little bit of a, his eyes, a little bit of a shine. And I know you guys aren't gonna be able to see this from home through the video, but it's pretty cool looking. Okay, do I wanna use any gold? Do I wanna use any uh, of the other stuff? I don't think so, I don't think so. I think that's all we're gonna do for today. I have glitter that we'll use on some of the other paintings later on I have like a, like a um, there's all kinds of colors pearl color and red oh I'm gonna use some red for his tie wherever my red might be I'll grab that in a second but I, I missed this spot right here with these bubbles bubble glitter okay all right if you guys don't have any of this at home don't worry you guys can buy this stuff if you guys wanted to this is all very just optional you can get the stuff at, um, at a local um, art store. All right, I'm gonna pause a second. Okay, so I grabbed some uh, <clears throat> some red glitter for his tie, and I did grab some of that little pearl glitter that I said I have. These are these are Twinkles, called <laughs> Twinkles brand, and you can pick those up. I think those are at uh, Michaels. Here you go, Michaels. Give you a little commercial right there. You guys need to. Send me a little commission. <laughs> Just kidding, folks. So a little tiny brush. That's what the red glitter looks like. And, and I don't, again, I don't know if you guys can see it. It's kind of hard for me to show you, but there's a little bit of the pearl color. There's the red here. And it's really, really shiny. I know the video is not going to do this justice, but this makes a really big difference in your paintings. Okay. And I'm going to use that, um, that pro glitter I'm going to use around the eyes. Oh, one thing about glitter, you want to make sure when you add it that the paint, that the background is already dry. The area you're going to add it to, you want to make sure it's dry. All right, it's a little tip. So I'll grab some of my pearl color and I'm going to come in. Ah, oh, you know what? Let's do a shirt. Yeah, let's do a shirt. Maybe he's going out on a date or something. Or him and Patrick are going to go hang out. And uh, meet up with some friends. Maybe he's going to a wedding. So we got to give him a little bit of a fancy shirt. Okay. There we go. Just adding some of the glitter around different areas like that. Let's not forget his sleeves. All right. All right. And again, guys, I know you're not going to be able to see this. Maybe at some point I'll take a picture and like a close up and show you guys what that looks like. But that is looking pretty cool. Let me see if you guys can see any of that glitter. Hey, look at his eyes. Okay, maybe there. Look at his tie, his shirt. And you can layer the glitter also. The glitter, the more um, the more layers you do, the shinier and more um, concentrated the glitter becomes. So it, you can consider you can consider that if you guys want to do that. And then I did say I was going to adjust his nose a bit, add a little more yellow to his nose. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's take the little brush and grab some yellow. There we go. That's a little better. All right. Okay, everybody. There is Mr. SpongeBob SquarePants. That was fun. Leave your comments. For me below okay and don't forget that i do uh that i do um requests yeah i like them cool all right guys
Talk to you in a moment. Okay, boys and girls, that is the end of our SpongeBob video tutorial for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I do. Uh, please let me know what you guys thought. Put your comments in the section below, or you know, in the comment section underneath the video. Also, let me know where you guys are watching me from. I'd love to know what city, state, country uh, you guys are all watching me from. Don't, don't give me your address. <laughs> I don't need to know that. Just tell me what city and state you guys are watching me from. That would be awesome. Also, don't forget that I take requests. Let me know uh, if there's a particular character that you guys would like to see in the very near future. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on that. Uh, lastly, if you guys haven't subscribed already, please do so. It really helps support my channel. Uh, also hit the little alert notifications bell next to the subscription part underneath the video. What that does is, is whenever I update or upload a new video, you will get notified immediately. And that way you guys know that it is, you know, at any time you guys can come over and watch my new video. Anyway, anyway, thank you guys so much for being here with me. I, again, I really appreciate it. I hope to see you guys here very soon. I'll be uploading a new video very shortly. All right, guys, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, talk to you guys all very soon. Bye-bye.